know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. So we got a special guest. Um, now, I know I've said that 400 times before, but this time, I mean it. Finally. Really. Finally, you don't first have to lie all, about it. Nah, first of all, Harry, how you feeling? You good? Doing you good. I want to... Giving bitches the boot. I've been laying <laughs> boots to bitches. I still haven't decided if laying boots to bitches means that uh, I'm banging women or I'm beating the shit out of people. I mean, it works both <laughs> not ways. Good. We're working on a like, catchphrase. What I like it is that it's, I want to leave it ambiguous so people never know. They're like, what? What is he talking about? Like, I just kick you it You want it to be ambiguous whether you beat women or not. Hi. No, I didn't say beat women. <laughs> that wasn't one of the options. No, no, no. You do your thing, brother. Oh, wait a minute. Anyway, Trey, <laughs> what up? You, you ready to rock, Trey? Not swinging on women and shit. Wearing my oh, boots on the man. ground. Do we keep your boots on the ground? Uh, we got a we got a uh, fan of the show, friend fan, friend of the show. Oh, yo, I, yo, Harry, do your white voice to introduce uh, him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would like to again point out to people who are just joining us that I am in fact not white. Uh, <laughs> Watch Harry say it in the voice. His white voice is his voice. <laughs> I'm just listen. I can't help it that I sound like this. All right, I was raised by two immigrant parents who sounded like they were two Draculas arguing. So instead, uh, I learned, you went the opposite direction. I learned how to speak English from the TV. <laughs> so this is what I sound like. I was born when your parents Bro. would leave you in the house for eight hours because they right? both somebody Yo, got to introduce Neil. What the fuck, ladies and gentlemen? This is a very talented young comedian. Uh, been on the show and he's got an update for us and everything uh, from Jimmy Kimmel Live all over the place. Very funny dude, Mr. Neil Nanda. Everybody, give it up for Neil. Yo. What up, Neil? Yo, what's going what's on, baby? Good. Chilling, chilling, man. Yeah, I mean, I do have an update for you guys, which is crazy. I didn't even give you clue you guys in on what the update was. No, I'm, the, it's I'm pretty okay. wild. It's pretty wild. All right. All right, so, so set it up. What, what did we talk about on the last show for people who didn't hear? We, we that, talked about my parents and their arranged right. marriage. And how they didn't love each other, and uh, you know all that shit. Well, during and right you now, and you like and you like fucking slutty white girls. Oh yeah, I do like fucking slutty white girls. That is also yeah, true. yeah. That is this uh, is factual. This is this fact. Checks out. <laughs> yes, that that does check out. Uh, There's no fake news on Man School. Too, no, but we we keep right it, now. Yeah, I keep it Neil out here, guys. <laughs> yeah, so, keeping it Neil. I keep it Neil. <laughs> keeping it Neil. But Neil only talk. when it comes to fucking white women. Only Neil when it goes, comes to fucking white hey, women. Hey man, I keep it Neil out here. Keep it nail. Keep it nail, son. So, I keep it Wesley. <laughs> keep it Wesley. That mean you don't pay your taxes? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, I know. What does that mean? You I don't pay taxes. It? And I, and I fuck. Oh, Thank I you, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> All right. All right. So, you, Neil, your background, the back, just for people who are listening, the background, both your parents, Indian descent, correct? They are Indian. Um, and yeah, they were arranged married. Uh, it was like they knew each other for less than a week when they okay. got married. So, and how did that work out? They were in love or not in love? Like, no, they like, weren't in love. They never. Right. We talked about that. They just yeah. never loved each other. And so here's the update. Right now, they're getting an arranged divorce. Wow. Wow. I'm wow. arranging it. Yeah. <laughs> you're, arra you're arranging it. <laughs> you setting yeah. your parents up for a divorce? Yeah, man. Uh, Why? 
it just I mean, I didn't do it, but they are they're getting divorced right now, which is uh, insane. pandemic. Another casualty of the pandemic. The Another COVID was, pandemic oh, divorce. Man, they made it what thirty years or twenty five years? What was thirty four years wow. or something? At a, at a point like that, years. why do you go let's end it? Why don't you just be like uh, how old how old's, how old's your pops? Ninety four. So old. like it, He's got a little you know time. how you know how hot it is for a hot 64-year-old Indian dude? No, right now? I don't think anybody knows. <laughs> no? no about a hot 64 no Indian a hot 64 50. period. It can't be that. I mean, he can just get another arranged marriage. Like, it's not That's that funny. hard for him. Yeah. He can just call up his moms, you know, like, yo, find me another one. <laughs> but, yo, go to the supermarket <laughs> right quick, see you find something nice. I just yeah. love I wish I could have did that with my mom, because my mom know what I like. She'd have got me some big-ass booty. Bitch, she would have been my son would like this big ass booty. You know what's I'm I'm dating a girl right now. My parents have it's a white girl. Uh of course. Surprise, surprise, Neil. Of course. Surprise, surprise, Come on, let's not let's not break trends. Yeah, I keep it Neil. So uh, <laughs> you know I, I'm still seeing a white girl, but my parents have definitely offered. They've been like, oh, if it don't work out, you know, Lakshmi. She's all right, right? Yeah. Like, huh. uh, you know, about, about Shruti right here. Like, they've given me the option. Yeah, well, how does that What that Shruti do, Rash, you know? Rash you, what's that Rash Shruti do? <laughs> 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 she take mad long to spell that. <laughs> and you've been you've been open and receptive to the idea like a little bit, but I, uh, I know that, like, because it's not what we, it used to be. Arranged marriages now, because last time we talked about this, it's, uh, women internationally are more like Americanized. Like, so it's not yeah. as crazy as it used to be. I think they are more well, Americanized because they want to come to America. Mm. I think that's the goal, you know? So they're so like, it's the, it's the setup. It's like, what do you mean? Saturday night fever. Yeah. yeah. Like they are like, oh, I love fif- 50 cents is my favorite. He's so great. 50 cents is my favorite. <laughs> Let's get jiggy with it. Get Let's jiggy. Get jig- want to come to Miami? Where's the break? <laughs> you know, like is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 I think they try to be more westernized because they, they admire American culture so much out there. And then mm-hmm. like their dream, like the reason my mom it, got married to my dad was because he was in America. He had that green card. Uh, so, you know. Uh, it was, yeah, but son, she kind of went 35 years, dog. If she was going yeah. to do the okie doke. Yeah. Got mad green cards, Dante. You know, that's like, that's like, you ever see the South Park where the dude is, uh, becomes the, the guy who comes an under, undercover, uh, Rape like a uh, sex police, and he has sex. Oh, he with out here whole... fucking everybody. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. And then he go at the end after they all have a gangbang and they all come. He goes freeze. <laughs> <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yes, my mom is exactly like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's correct, Dante. It's a perfect analogy. Perfect analogy. Yeah, I, mean, is it? Yo, I guess I kind of went off. Remind me of a spy that be fucking. <laughs> yeah. Dante, can you lower your shit just a little bit? It's coming a little hot. Uh, while I want to a little hot, Dante. Oh. Temperature's high on oh, it. Oh my god! <laughs> Is everything? I can't help it. I can't help it. There you go. That's. I'm good. keeping it, Dante. Keeping it, you Dante. Know what I mean? <laughs> Very similar to keeping it, Neil. Though. Very similar. I almost. I also keep it, Neil. I also I keep, keep it, Neil. Neil. Sometimes. Um. So, Neil. All right. So, how do you find this out, Neil? How do they? What is the information they give you and all that? Like, I mean, we talked about it a little bit last time about how like they never showed affection or hmm. loved each other, and uh, so they started sleeping in separate rooms years oh, ago, oh, shit. like probably a a year ago. I would say maybe a year and a half okay. ago or something. And uh, so this was going on for like six months, right before the pandemic. Right before the pandemic, right? They were prepared. They were prepared. Yeah, Separate they knew it was quarantine. Like, right? Yeah, they're they're social distancing. They've been doing it for ten years. Uh, but yeah, so my, my mom was like sleeping in a separate room. They weren't talking, and then they got in some kind of fight. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened. And then my dad left, and my mom changed the locks. Oh, yeah, oh, she changed wow. the locks. Wait, so him. when you say he left, he left for like, did he just go out in a huff and go like go to the store and she changed the locks or he disappeared no. for well, a how while? long he did he leave for a day? And uh, oh, he like texted her the next day and was like, yo, we need to cool down. So I'm just going to be out for a minute. And then she changed the locks that day. Wow. With his, with his credit card, which is pretty Pretty wild. Gangster. That's, that's, that's how he gangster. found out. 
it was kind of gangster. He found out he was like, yo, locksmith. Like he didn't know <laughs> what was going on. Wow. So he he. So he got out of the house. He was out of the house for like a couple weeks. And my mom was debating divorcing him. She's like, I don't know. I'm so old. I don't I have no idea. I don't like 50 cents. You know, I cannot, <laughs> cannot find another American, you know. And I was like, yeah, you know what? You know, whatever you want to do, mom. And then my and then, bam, my dad serves her papers. Wow. Ah, yeah. Really? It was preemptive. He was trying to get to it before she did kind of. Uh-huh. Deal. And she, uh-huh. she basically she was bluffing. She wasn't going to do it. And he right, called right. her. He called her bluff like, oh, you want this to happen? Let's do this. Sh- and shout then out she to your like, dad for keeping it. Neil. I don't <laughs> know what his name is. <laughs> My dad's an example of when keeping it. Neil goes wrong. Because he, <laughs> That's he, funny. he didn't want he didn't want it to go down like that. He didn't want a divorce, but he was like, if she's going to do it. Yeah, but he he served papers, though. I, I know it's it's. And what what's the difference in her serving him? You still got to split the shit up and go. Right. Like, what did he think the advantage was by him I, filing? The advantage, I think, was the reason uh, for the divorce. You know, irreconcilable differences, I think, was what he filed it under. And okay. she she was like, no, it's because of abuse, Ooh. you know, so he was trying to get ahead of God damn. He was trying not uh, to get the charge. Was it was it physical abuse or emotional? So um, I would say I would say both. Um, right. You know, uh, when I was have like, you ever seen it? Yeah. When I was a kid. Damn, uh, yeah. from funny to sad, fast as fuck. Yeah, real, real quick. You know, you roasting a kid in school, be like, your mama fat, and he be like, my mom died. I'm like, all right, yeah. nigga, fun over, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 don't, she, she I don't think I want to keep. I don't want to keep it Neil no more, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I might be keeping it too Neil out here. <laughs> too Neil, <bro. laughs> a little too Neil. Um, and I gotta be careful too, cause my mom's lawyer used a podcast uh, uh, as evidence. Of it, really? Really? I, talk, I talked about it on a pot. So I mean, I guess I don't really have to um, be careful. You are going to have to testify on this. I I didn't want to. I'm but definitely I, testifying damn. with you. I'm up there. What up? I'm not testifying, but sh- my podcast that podcast is which te- which podcast did they pull up and what was it that they pulled up? So, you, you what did you bring up the the, the abuse? You talked yeah. about the abuse. And so then- I was I was doing you know Akash Singh. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, in yeah. New York, he had a podcast like specifically about Indian people called American Desi podcast. Uh, mm. It was a while ago. It was probably like six, seven years ago, and I did it. And uh, I talked about the abuse, and uh, I was like, you know, when you do a podcast, you're like, my parents aren't gonna listen to a fucking podcast I do. Mm-hmm. Right? They be listening to them shits, bro. Yeah, mm. but this is the fucked up thing is my parents don't read like the paper. Or anything they don't read, like you know, the Atlanta Journal Constitution, the New York Times, none of that shit. Uh, but they do read the they Indian. on Facebook, yeah, oh, Facebook, the Indian. yeah. They read the Indian newspaper, and this became like a, a cover story on the Hindustani Times about mm-hmm. like Indian people need to stop beating their kids and their their uh, their wives. And they use oh, and your statement was on and my there. podcast was on it, so my dad and my whole family saw this shit. Oh, oh, my God. Wow. So what did they say to you about it? Like, what is your dad? Yo, he didn't. He's not a uh, he, he doesn't talk really. So he didn't really <laughs> say anything. And uh, he just kind of I mean, the thing is, he was abusive when I was a kid. And then, like, I think he's been shamed into not being abusive. You know what I mean? By by who? Society? By, by society and by oh, okay. uh, the podcast helped a lot. I'll yeah. say that 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 mm. didn't help. Him hearing that. So he has changed his ways in the last like decade, I guess. But she's, Mm -hmm. you know, bringing up abuse from like 20 years ago, which I think is a little shady, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no victims. It's it's no victims. It's only volunteers, baby. Right. You know, no, I I don't like to like victim shame and all that shit. It's it's my mom, too. So it's weird. But like if someone if someone did something 20 years, it's cancel culture. My mom's fucking canceling my dad. <laughs> he did that shit 20 years ago. Let it go. You know what I mean? Like, canceling my dad. I, t- I, tweeted, <laughs> I tweeted horrific shit 20, you know, like 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. don't want to go to court for that. I don't want to have to, like, yeah. explain that shit. So, you know, my dad was shitty and he was abusive, but, like, it was so long ago and he hasn't done it. He's clearly changed his ways and all that stuff. So I feel like she should go amicably. But mm-hmm. for lawyers, like, yo, we'll get hell. We'll get way more money and we'll get way mm-hmm. more shit if you bring this mm-hmm. up. So I was like, all right. You, I mean, you're not wrong. I'll get that. Yeah, but you know what happened? You know what happens with that, though? 
they end up getting the money mm-hmm. because your 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 dad your dad's lawyers got to resist that, and then her lawyers got to go, and then you're, and the only people that are getting out longer. only people are getting rich is the lawyers, and then what it is left for her to chop up will be shit because so much money will go to the lawyers. Yeah, they've already done all these postponing and arraignments and financial checks and all oh, we have to come back with the liquidity and like there's all this yeah. shit going on. it's been going on for like five six months already yeah and yeah. especially with the pandemic like and it ain't nowhere it ain't close either that's not close yeah. i mean even if you have an amiable kind of uh divorce it still could take two years Easy. Right. Two years, three years. I know guys five years, you know, when they're fighting for stuff and scrapping and scrambling and you create this tension. There's a whole um, there's a documentary. Have your mom watch this documentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget that. But if you Google, it's a documentary on marriage and how the lawyers play it uh, on both ends, the lawyers, the judges, everything. So, you know, I I've just Google it. Google about Marriage yeah. is a business or a marriage corp, I think it's called. Marriage That's corp, what I think yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's just because it just, you know, you marriage. So the relationship vows? is it shattered is, vows. No. Is it marriage corp? Let's see. I'll look it up. Marriage corp. I think it is. But, but, it, is, but it's but interesting. This is also why, why I always love the thing that women go like, why don't men want to get married? It's so like, mm-hmm. why would we? Look at this. Yeah. Like all this shit. Like, well, that's what that whole doc is about. It's like, this is not even, this is not a good deal. It's really not a good deal. And then you get it, it's not a good deal. And then, you know, and is then you get somebody on the guy's wants, part or on both parts. It's on the guy's part. It's a shitty deal. It's a shittier mm-hmm. deal. Shitty deal. The, the shittier. Uh, Divorce Corp is a documentary from 2014. So that might be it. Um, yeah. uh, but it's a shittier, it's always. The laws in America, for whatever reason, kind of skew towards uh, the women now because it's making up for the time that men, there were no laws. So a guy would just clean out his wife and leave her like if he wanted to f- start fucking the new yeah. secretary, he'd just be right. like, well, I'm done with you now, bitch. And then she would get cleaned out like with what happened to Tina you know, Turner. Divorce in India is but, like you just got to throw rocks at your wife. Right. Like, exactly. just, you know, yeah. get, like, like she's yeah, a better. raccoon because no you, yeah. ha- you have to throw beheading. No you have deal. to throw an acorn at your new wife to signify, though. That's the right. weird part. Yeah. But at least they have a system. It seems fair. You know, now, you know, seems fair. Yeah. But, yeah. Fuck, man. And how, how are you feeling about all this, Neil? Like it puts you in the middle. I forget. It's, I know you had weird. a contemptuous relationship with your dad for a long time. Right. So. You know what the fuck that means? What's a contentious a contempt? Who, contempt- who did what to where? It was what? fucked up, yo. It was fucked, it was fucked up. up, yo. Yeah, Sorry. A contempt- Can say that? Throw that one more time. Contemptuous. Okay. Who? It was fucked up, yo. Contemptuous. Up, yo. I could dig um, it. Contemptuous. Yeah. Me, I, you know, uh, just, available of contempt. Yeah. yeah. I've just kind of tried to stay out of it as much as possible. Yeah. I don't think it's I'm, I'm too. How do you feel it. about it? What's your feeling about it? I mean, I think it should have happened a long time ago. Mm. I, I don't think it happened a long time ago because they wanted to stay together for the kids, which I respect. And I think that that's really nice. But um, yeah. how old are you kids at this point? But y'all didn't give a fuck anyway, did you? I mean, did y'all really care? Or did you, how, how many brothers and sisters you got? I forgot. I got one sister. And uh, uh, yeah. Would and, she have gave a fuck? If, or did she yeah, kind of did all of no, y'all kind of know that this talk- wasn't a good we, we talked about it when we were on the last podcast, but like Indian people don't divorce. Like, this is not a thing in our yeah. culture. It's becoming right, right. more, uh, it, it's becoming like, you know, in America, it's like 50 50. It's like flipping a coin. Yeah. Is the divorce yeah. rate. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's even more. I think it's like 55% in America. Uh-huh. And in India, it's like, it was like 10% or something. You know, it was like very rare. Right. And now right. it's more like 25%. It's like a little more common. So, mm-hmm. but when we were kids, like it was unheard of. Like we would have been done no. yeah. from the family. Like really, um, yeah. Like in, in the Indian community, we're the nosiest people. In the like every time yeah, you go to like no. an Indian event, it's like, do you hear what me and Garte is C in math? Like it was like a oh, big. Shit. You, know, like, <laughs> you, you got a you got a D. Like everybody fucking knew, you know. So yeah. Indian people are like gossipy, chatty, nosy people. So it would have been a big thing in the Indian community for us, and it would have like made us outcasts in, in our 
in our group, in our in our community. Now, are you are you really connected to the Indian community like that or or, I, or like I'm not, I mean, you personally? Right. When I was a kid, I was more so, but more by you, obligation. You kind of had to be. You, yeah. I mean, I you didn't have a choice of where you went. Your parents, I didn't have a choice. Yeah. Exactly. So when I was a kid now, um, absolutely not. Not at all. I get wedding yeah. invites and shit, and I'm like, I don't even remember your name. I don't. Which, <laughs> which Shivam Patel is this? I don't know who this is. You know what I mean? Because uh, yeah, Indian weddings are. I've I've done those just uh, doing video and stuff. They are gigantic uh, affairs. Like if you yeah. don't get invited, yeah. you must have done. You. I mean, you must have touched somebody. Up. Yeah, and exactly. like more than once or something. Right. <laughs> everybody gets an invite. Everybody, the yeah, thing. they're crazy. So, they got elephants and fucking. Yeah, yeah, they just did that on uh, the Tom and Jerry movie. Just what, they trying to show my culture. Yeah, uh, Colin Jost is on it, and he's marrying an Indian woman, and he hires elephants. Yeah, they go bring all them out. in. They, yeah, they come in on elephants, and I've then seen they, elephants like riding down like in like Midtown Atlanta before. You know, because of an wow. Indian wedding. It's, they are gigantic, crazy. like amazing affairs. It's huge and like opulent. Just really not supposed cool. to be an elephant in, in Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Why the fuck there's an elephant in Atlanta, bro? Yeah, That's the last Indian thing you're supposed to see out that motherfucker. <laughs> um, right. The, uh, let me, I, how do you think that affected? I mean, because you, you've you kind of rebelled like, fuck this. It's you know, it's funny because I was talking to somebody. Uh, I, actually, I was talking to my sister today and my youngest sister. And I was saying, you know, like, you know, my aversion to my pops and our relationship um, is is whatever it is, is is. But my pops grew up during Jim Crow. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like he literally was in Jim Crow, like, you know, Selma, Alabama, that the bus. So it's like, in a sense, you got to kind of go, dog, I get it that you don't have the scope of knowledge to kind of open your mind up to how I'm thinking or how I how how I feel or or there's no pursuit of happiness. It's like you doing comedy. You doing comedy is a thing that you did because you love doing it to go against the culture and and you're so much happier behind behind it. But you got to also kind of forgive them because they just never even had the scope to think beyond that, you know? Yeah, and that's how, that's why how? that's why I brought up the example of like my mom canceling my dad. Like it, it is yeah. absolutely like it's like watching the old Eddie Murphy uh, specials, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah, they're you a watch rough. it now and you're like, ah, yikes, man. Like that's yeah, not yeah. Real. like, yo, yeah. man, I got good yeah. friends, man. Stop saying yeah. that, you know, yeah, and yeah. Shit. but yeah. you know, that's what my dad is. My dad's like Eddie Murphy in the seventies. He's raw as fuck, yeah. man. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Raw as fuck. yeah, yeah. he's from the, he's from 1950s India. You know? And ironically, he wears that same purple leather jumpsuit, too. He wears which is the same very- jumpsuit <laughs> at, <laughs> at his liquor store. Anybody want vine? What's up, man? You know, <laughs> my my. um Yeah. So he's from 1950s India. He came to America in the 80s and uh, it was the first time he ever saw a computer. It was the first time he like rode in a car. Like it was, wow. you know, he's from a completely yeah, yeah. different. Yeah, you got to take that. It's- I just watched. um Uh. Charles Bronson movie. What's the the what's the, the movie Harry with the uh, uh Death Bronson. Wish? the vandalism? What Death Wish? Death Wish I yeah. just watched Death Wish. Jeff Goldblum is in it, right? Five minutes into the movie, there three dudes is raping this girl. Jeff Gold, a young, beautiful Jeff Goldblum is face fucking a girl. In the in the first five minutes of of Death Wish, like they have stripped her clothes down, tits out, put they spray spray paint on her ass, and and Jeff Goldblum fuck, and you're like, what the f-? like? And I remember watching this, but my the scope of what I think about now and wh- how uncomfortable that made me feel. It's so can you imagine you're growing up in that? This is how you're yeah. programmed and, and, and so on and so forth. And then well, nobody face fucked my mom, thankfully. But, uh, <laughs> you know, or spray painted her ass. Dante two for two with some wild. <laughs> yeah, you wild, man. Uh, <laughs> you, you wild. It's all right. Uh, I was trying to I was actually trying to connect with him, but I'm not. No, doing I feel that you. Either. I feel you on that. I mean, things have definitely <laughs> things have definitely changed. 
And my dad coming from a third world country to America, the culture is different. Yeah. Like, you know, my dad was abusive towards my mom and myself, and my sister when we were kids. It wasn't a thing where I was like, oh, man, this is tragic. This is, uh, you know, so sad and horrible. I was like, yo, man, my cousin gets it way worse. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. It, it was part of the culture. It was like, right, right. I, I just, Right. I assume that every Asian family just got. The, I mean, like, why do you think we go to Harvard? You know, like, what do you? Yeah. Yeah. You got to beat a motherfucker to go to Harvard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> beat him with a calculus book and he'll get it. You know. Yeah. Also, the other yeah, thing yeah, yeah. is, uh, back in the day, immigrant cultures, you kind of stay within your own community, even if right. you were you're, you were in America. You generally moved to an area where there was other, like for me, it was Armenians and Ecuadorians. So. Right. You go to the same church events. You go to all this mm-hmm. stuff where you kind of insulate yourself. So all that stuff from it the still looks 50s. Like that. A little bit, but there's less of it now, at least thanks to the internet and stuff. Like I that. think that's mostly in like the younger generations or certain like yeah. types of fraction of the culture. But for the most part, people are insulated in whatever the fuck they want to think. Yeah, and it's that's true. So even today, I, it, you know, I do a lot of consultations with Indian dudes, right? And what's what's really What's the, like just when I met you, Neil, like you had a swag, you know what I mean? Like you already had a swag. I was like, this dude definitely has black friends. Right. He's sitting in a cheetah yeah. print chair with a Gucci hat on. Yeah, yeah. you can't not blow. You Might can't as well start <laughs> rapping, Neil. Come on. Son. <laughs> Freestyle. So but it's it's interesting because uh, it, and I mean, this is going to sound cliche, but the dude was a, he was a coder. Right. Mm-hmm. And cousin, he goes, right? yeah. like, he goes, <laughs> he's like, you know, I'm having a lot of problems with women. And da, da, da. and I'm like, dog, I said, I said, at your job, um, how good are you at code? He goes, I'm really good. I go, how many dudes are better at coding than you? He goes, one guy. And he said it grimacing like he was mad. Yeah, you know, yeah. That, <laughs> That's like getting and, B minus for Indian. Yeah. Like, no, I, you know, I missed the one <laughs> question on the SAT. It was fucked up. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, he goes, you know, he's, he's, he's really upset because he's so awkward with women. He's like, uh, 43. He's got a great job. He's been coding for long. And, and no, no, he was younger than that. He was like in his uh, late twenties. And he goes, and I'm saying, dog, but even when you're coding, if you make a mistake, you don't really make a mistake because you know how to fix it. I said, I go, but you, you painstakingly learned how to code. People don't understand that the social dynamics of relationships, you have to learn how to do it. You don't it's just not something you automatically know. And if culturally your family is going, go to school, get your education. Nobody gives a fuck about your social. Nobody gives about your your all those other things because they're still on a survival mode. They right. their their mentality is to survive. And your your mentality or even our generation is to fulfill you know, right. to feel, fulfill some kind of happiness. And that is a really difficult. But the thing that gets me is a lot of Indian dudes, they won't they won't forgive themselves for not being good at it when they haven't practiced it. Right. You know, like, how could you expect to be? Well, our culture definitely, you know, to people. Yeah. And our culture definitely like it's 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 not a priority because of the arranged right. marriage. You know what I mean? Like, right. It's like, oh, my mom's got me. I don't need to worry about pussy. You know what I mean? My wow, what a comfort. It, it's a bit of a comfort, but it's a bit of a crutch, too, because you never learn yeah. how to be in a relationship. You never learn to love. You never show, you know, like learn to show affection or like romance. There's no romance in the like there's mm. romance in Bollywood movies, but that's a dude lip syncing behind a tree. That's not really right. Right. That's right, what they right, think right. romance is, which no Indian, uh, no Indian. You've never seen Indian dude in the woods like, oh, <laughs> it doesn't happen, you know, but uh, so yeah, it's, it's not a it's not a priority within our culture to, to love, you know. Yeah. And, you know, so you don't learn those skills. So then you end up in a marriage <laughs> and you don't yeah. know how to deal with it because you, you also you've never the been in is that uh, that's a culture that sing a lot, bro. They sing and dance sing a, a fuck ton and they ain't no romance. Ain't no nobody romance. grinding on each other for all that singing and dancing. <laughs> That's Yo, fucked it, up. They don't even. They, they don't need even some kiss. usher. They need an Indian usher. They need an Indian usher. That you right. They man. got Indian ushers. Dude. They got a Why lot. Why they of not Indian bumping ushers. and grinding and shit? Yeah, they not. Mad, it's, diff- it's very. Yeah. It's a very prude culture too. Like it, Bollywood yeah. movies, they don't kiss in Bollywood. Oh, movies. Yeah. They don't yeah. definitely don't fuck. But they yeah. they they when they kiss, they get real close. 
and they and turn away. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, they, they do this, and then they go, and they start dancing. <laughs> start, wow. And they get behind a tree real quick. That's, and kissing, and kissing is fucked and up. If, and it's yeah. a billion of them. There's a billion hey, of them. So somebody, <laughs> hey, folks, somebody. Somebody's fucking like y'all, y'all full of shit. It, it's a range Like, fucking. stop lying. Yeah, That's but it's it also. And it's they a, made the Kama, yeah, Kama Sutra. It's, they got a, a book on fucking. Yeah, I, I do a joke about the Kama Sutra. And it's the point. The joke is basically those are just drawings. Like some dude. Yeah, like, it wasn't actually I, true. Yeah, this is this is what I want to do. OK, I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. It's, no one was really doing that shit. That's true. We don't have proof that the guy actually practiced. They were. Yeah, drawing. Not, a, lot of them joint, down. a lot of them joints ain't really practical. Trust me. I went yeah, through that. I went through all... in an asshole while you're fucking. It's not possible. You can't do that. So, it's yeah. dead. That horse riding, uh, that wheelbarrow, that shit don't work. That Can't do that. <laughs> and women don't have oh, the upper language. body strength. They don't have the up. They don't have the upper body strength, player. Player. But yeah, never I mean, that's all going to change a little bit more. I think as uh, I think internet yeah. becomes more prevalent. And women it's, a global, it's a global Both. culture. It's becoming a more global culture. For sure. People are not that around. far away. Yeah. For sure. India is definitely becoming more westernized and it's becoming more open. It's the fastest growing market. Is that a bad thing, bro? I'm sorry. I don't no, know not at all. Bad thing. No, I don't know. I don't, think so. I don't know. It's not. I don't think it I is. don't know, son. Everybody should have their fucking culture. When everybody's just thinking, let me buy some shit. What What is Western American culture? I mean, buy some shit. Buy and then, some, yeah. it's, it's less prude, you know, and it, it's more open minded because like so is also, it more is Western it's, culture more it, open minded? Well, here's what it is, Andre. It's also not beating yeah, your wife for, she's compared to Indian. Was, oh, Western culture don't beat wives. All right. Not as much. I mean, not as much. We Look still at do men, it, but listen, America it's, was it's fucking less women accepted. Up. It's, it's illegal here. I'll put it that way. Yeah, it's not. Right, that's it's frowned upon. <laughs> it's frowned upon. I'll put it that way. I'll put it that way. In India, it's just yeah. like, what did you do? You know, like uh, here. Also, <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't the the sum total of Indian culture. There's other shit. Oh, there is no. a- yeah, but it's a, it is the, the the whole patriarchal masculine dog. It's, let me tell you something. Here. You a lot of times you'll watch this and maybe and you tell me if I'm wrong. Like if you'll have a, you'll see a, a mother with her child because the the the, the, the son it, it is Indian sons is rough on their moms. Like when they're young, like toddlers, like. It's because if you if you as a young man are not seeing your father respect your mother mm-hmm. and you're you recognize the, the that your male your manliness or your male, you it's it's hard for you to respect women. So how did that affect you, Neil? Like where so th- I feel like there's two ways you can go with these things. And and before I move on, I want to say that, you know, you mentioned that, uh, you know, there's, there's more of the Indian culture. There absolutely is. Indian culture is not just like, oh, yeah, we beat our wives. That's all we do. You know, that's, that's, not, the ol- that's not the only yeah, thing. But with every culture, there are pros and cons. And that's one of the absolutely. cons. You know, yeah. Indian culture has some uh, awesome, like, music and uh, fashion. Yeah. And, like, you know, there's, there's a lot of great things to Indian culture. The food, the people are, are, are generally very helpful. Mm. You know, you go into any 7-Eleven. What, what do you like, my friend? You're my friend. Everybody's your yeah. friend. You know, it's, it's a very Until yeah, yeah, they yeah, start culture. following my black ass around the store. Fuck off, Rajesh. Uh, uh, that? Somebody, got, tr- somebody yeah. got triggered. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I am a trigger. You're <laughs> not the friend. You're not the friend. Yeah. Uh, uh, Everybody else is the friend. Everybody, Everybody else. else. Not this nigga. Not that guy, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, before I move on. But, yeah, uh, how that affected me, I think there's two ways you can go with that. And I learned this in, like, high school because, uh, you know, my parents used to beat the shit out of me up until I was, like, 15, 6. Once I got, like, big enough, they stopped. To fight uh, back. So, yeah, to big enough to fight back, they kind of, they're like, all right, we, we did enough. Uh, so when I was in high school, there was a kid who was going to Harvard, an Asian kid. And I made a joke with him, and I said, um, I said, uh, yo, man, that's crazy. You're going to Harvard, man. Congratulations. Uh, your parents must have beat the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, just just a joke. Just like a light. Right, right. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and, right, then, right, right. and then he was like, he was like, no, nah, they never they never beat me. And I was like, then how would you get into Harvard? How is that possible? You know? <laughs> yeah, and, love. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, well, my dad's dad, my grandpa used to beat the shit out of him. And he was like, uh-huh. I'll never beat the shit out of my kids because my dad. Uh-huh. Did. And in that right. moment, I go. Oh, you can do that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Neil, Neil was like, wait, that's an option? This whole time you change? I didn't know. So at that moment, I decided everything my to dad beat did. Your dad's that I, ass. That I, yeah. Uh, that you didn't moment, like. 
<laughs> that's when I beat his ass. No, but that at that moment was when I decided uh, everything that he did that was wrong. I'm just gonna not do that. So it didn't. Mm-hmm. Affa- it affected me positively in a way because I was like, all right, right, right. you know what? I'm gonna take his mistakes and correct them. I'm yeah. gonna be loving. I'm gonna be wrong. Yeah, and you're and you're hypersensitive to his mistakes too. Right. You become hypersensitive to whatever he does wrong, and even, yeah, well, even that's when a, it's that's, that's like a, me and my brothers and, and some of my family members. That's like wild gangster, and I'm like, I'm not going down that path. Right, yeah, exactly. You, you could do two things. You can either be like, all right, well, that's just the way it is. Yeah, wow. Or you wow. can be like, no, it doesn't have to be that way. And I decided it doesn't have yeah. to be that way. Well, for right. me, I, I I had to do the same thing with my my parents and my family. Like my dad, I realized this, like Dante always breaks my balls. I'm, I'm, I was the most negative human being that there God could be. Damn. <laughs> you like, see the scars that I have. <laughs> the emotional I have scars. scars. I have no real ones. Oh, real. Oh, <laughs> just, you, you just were real ones. yourself. Well, I was while I was giving you I mean, Oof. everything was like it can't work. There's no way. There's no forget it. We'll try this. Ah, it's Until just not you gave work. Harry a slice of ham and then he was like, wait a minute, yeah, wait baby. A minute. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. Just stupid. <laughs> just ridiculous. But my point was, uh, I didn't realize like so I had to start doing the opposite of like, all right, I'm not gonna be like my I realized it came from my dad. It Mm. came from my dad because he is the most negative guy. And to this day, like, I mean, everything, no matter. Hey, let's do this. Uh, One time I go, I'm trying to like empathize. I go, it's terrible. Daddy goes, it's worse than terrible. Like (laughs) terrible is not even the word. I'm like, touche. He will always find a way to make it worse. And I go, I didn't have a chance. I didn't have a chance. But what I had to do was go. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be right. agitated. I don't want to be confrontational about everything. So you can take. And he those still lessons. does it. Oh, he even still though does he's it. fighting. I mean, you still do it. A still. little bit, yeah, a little you, bit. I'm you better nah, than I you was. fought. If it's yo know, way better, like a hundred times yeah. better. But you still will when it's a different situation. Yeah. When it's when it's a when it's a uh, uh. So if you're going this way about career and you've learned to kind of just stay in your own stay out of your head and, and work yeah. move forward and work right but it, if it comes to something else like family or some other topic right, yeah a lot of times you won't reapply the fact that yo this is just learned negativeness that i'm i'm, I'm but spraying it, this on everything but it was only this year like during the pandemic and and living with my dad again for a little bit that i realized like oh that's where it came from Like, because I wasn't around him. I was living a great life on my own. And then when I get around him, it's worse than terrible. Like, I'm like, Neil, were you aware of it as a as a young dude? Or was just that moment where somebody was like, I'm I'm going the opposite way. It was I mean, I was somewhat aware of it. I I knew like what he was doing was wrong. I wasn't a fan of him beating the shit out of me. You know, I wasn't like, oh, this is cool. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. But, you know, I was aware of it to a degree. But I didn't make the like the choice. I didn't I didn't realize I didn't make the like distinction of like, yeah, that's absolutely what I'm going to do is just do the opposite. You know, at no point did I want to repeat his mistakes. Right. But right, right. I was af- I was afraid. I was like, oh, shit. What if I because like I knew the statistics of like people that beat their kids got beat when they were mm. kids. And I knew I was like, fuck, I don't want to be that dad. Like, shit, right. is it just going to happen? Is it am I just going to have kids mm. one day and like have the urge and to start beating them? Yeah, and just start beating the shit out of them when they get a C in math. Like, is that is that just gonna happen? You know, right, and right. when I heard him say that his dad never touched him because his father touched him, I go, oh, so I I don't have to do that. It's not gonna be an urge. It's not yeah. gonna be a problem. Um, so I decided that day, like, I'm just gonna everything he did wrong. I'm gonna do the opposite. Now, let me ask you this: Did that affect you in a way that when you started dealing with, you know? women out of your culture, just regular American women or whatever, did, were you too much of a pussy? Like, did, were you, did you go the other way because of that? You're too soft. I, I was a little bit of a pussy for sure. But at the same time, I really rebelled against the Indian culture at a very mm-hmm. young age. Like I was in like, I played guitar for like a band. I was like, you know, I was. Is that a thing that's like rebelling against oh, if you yeah. play guitar? Yeah, that's like going really? to jail. Yeah, that, that like, is because, like, imagine Dante, some nigga in the projects with an electric guitar. He was like, What yeah. the fuck you doing, bro? You don't got no bars. You're not rapping. Right. Yeah, it's, it's still out. I yeah. remember <laughs> being outcasted for interest 
Right. By exactly. black people like, in the exactly. hood. Like what? Like, like what? What did you get you out of When skateboarding was not popular, when riding a BMX music. bike was not cool, when right. I was wearing fucking Dockers and Sperry's to school, niggas would be like, right. hey, you gay? Yo, you man, a boat, was, nigga? What the fuck? I mean, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna confess, man. I was in an emo band. Come on, bro. That is not Indian. <laughs> I had like the hair covering my face, and I had like that's Indian though. I, <laughs> the man, hair in the face Indian. is Indian. No, no turban. No turban. Yeah. I had the tight. Did jeans. you have the? Did you did you spray it blue? Did you no, get a little uh, blue. Now nah, that's. Me. They would kill me. I wasn't allowed to do that. I okay, did I was that's that. the full rebellion right there. You come home with hot pink hair, some shit. Yeah, but like I had like you know electric guitar. I was like blasting that shit in my room and like hey. listening to like My Chemical Romance and like go to work. Hell school yeah, and shit. Fuck yeah, you know, My like, Chemical Romance. Yeah, so like I was I was that kid. So like I, I was like thirteen also like when I was doing that kind of shit. So that was like my the beginning of my rebellion and like. The way I, I rebelled from the Indian culture was like I never dated Indian girls. Like I didn't even look at wow. them, you know. Wow. And so I quickly became acclimated to American culture by dating white girls. I was just mm-hmm. like, you know, I was like learning. Oh, this is what Americans do on mm-hmm. dates. We we finger is what we do. Okay, I got it. I <laughs> go to Friday, you yeah, eat, yeah. and then you go in your car and finger. Yeah, exactly. You figured it. I figured it out. You make out the theater. You try to finger. You put your dick in the popcorn. I got it. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All the yeah. traditional American. All the traditional and then once, American. And once you do that, you can't really go back. You it's can't a, go back. You can't go back to like trying to arrange it or nope. meeting a. Nope, you can't. That's cousin, crazy. Like Kurt, cousin. Kurt Metzger. Kurt Metzger grew up as a Jehovah Witness, and like as soon as he got some pussy, he was like, "Oh, I." They were like, well, we'll excommunicate you. And he goes, so be it. Yeah. <laughs> then let it be so. <laughs> so it's, it's it's this kind of, you know, this kind of closed thinking. And then once you break out of it, you're like, oh, this is so great. But the did did you said you were a pussy for a while. What did you mean by that? Like, uh, is it like, you know, like just like really hesitant and like scared to talk. Was to it was you like regular or was it? Like culturally induced, or I'm pretty was it regular. just being a guy, a, a guy in China, a kid, you know? And I was like, yeah, a, I was, an, yeah. I, I was an immigrant kid, and I was like scrawny, and I was an emo band, and I was like a loser, you know? Like I wasn't like the cool kid, so it was, it was just that, you know? It I wasn't was, like, a hot. successful emo band. That's the thing about emo bands. Yo, if if they're not you, successful, you, I'm not gonna lie, man. We were pretty, and this is like it's. It used to be. I used to be embarrassed about it, but now I'm like, yeah, I'm proud of it. We were pretty <laughs> damn successful. We played Warped really? Tour, first of all. Oh, shit. That's we, successful. We, we all played right. Warped Tour. We opened for the Devil Wears Prada. I don't know if you know who that is, but they were like a big screamo band at the time. We we sold out the Masquerade in Atlanta. We scored, scored out the wow. 40 Watt. All right, that's we, some real shit. We're still on Spotify. We're still on Apple Music. We still have fans. What's the what's the name of the band? I'm gonna check right. it out. You gotta you gotta check it out. It's called Silence. All right, no, this is so embarrassing. Silence before sunrise. Oh okay. yeah. I don't know what that means either. You stay that quiet the in the morning the time. We you gotta stay, think yeah. in the morning. Yeah, you stay quiet in the morning time. Oh Silence yeah. Before sunrise. You wake you up at like four. We were a good emo quiet. band. We had, dude, we had like fan. We had like MySpace groupies and shit. Like we were okay. We were so popping. you're if you're playing the Warp tour, that means girls are probably coming up at some point you're meeting some girls at these things I was, right I was give it to me shocked. silence before the dawn that's what it is no, no, no silence before sunrise, sunrise. Silence got it before you got sunrise. apple music spotify i do see uh, it on apple music yeah that's God. me lead guitarist oh wow. lead guitarist yo you fuck you know. with um young the giant yeah, of course. Ah, they have Indian yeah, singers, son. Samir Gadia, of course. Yeah, that's my. I fuck with them heavy. Young yeah, the Giant exactly. Fire. Holy shit, Neil. So that's Neil, crazy. if this fucking if these comedy clubs don't open back up, I mean, yeah. you got to hit the road Go again. Back to pick your up emo the guitar. That, that whole genre died, which sucks. Because like I actually somewhat enjoy that genre. Somewhat enjoy that genre. Um, but that whole genre died, which sucked. But it was it when it was popping. I was getting I was getting girls from the band for sure. I was getting some yeah. some, some girls that were like into the lead guitaring, you know. They were they were they were down, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, but I was still I was a little bit of a pussy. I just wasn't good. You didn't know women. what to do. You didn't, didn't know, know what, what to, to do. Yeah. I was you in don't... high school. I was you know. Dumb. If you're too nice, I suffer from the same shit, which is like I was too nice and I didn't know like you never wanted to make same. the first move and right. o- almost overly respectful. But then yeah. women, yeah, women especially young girls want you to make the move. Right. So now you're just at a fucking I never stalemate. Had that problem. 
Yeah, that's you know, different. the only thing that would save me sometime is like I remember Dante would say this about Kurt, where he was like, Kurt has this his game is that he he's like so, he's so something dumb. about his mentality. He's yeah, so like he's not he, he, it doesn't, he's just he doesn't, honest. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't know he's how so, to not tell the truth Kurt in that is, second. Yeah. Kurt is so, so dumb I, that he's he, he's got game. I think that's like, I feel just, like I had that as a kid. I, I think, like certain times, I'm yeah, I think that's called autism. I'm pretty sure that's autism. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bro. <laughs> like, I, maybe <laughs> because so, I'll just be like, I like you. Yeah, <laughs> just, that's that's I'll just autism. Say this shit. For real. So what? What? How did? <laughs> full on how did each of you correct it? Because for me, I just corrected it through repetition and through just being more truthful and more having to learn to be more mm. aggressive but that's everything through comedy and what dante taught me but for I the listeners comedy. how did you guys well, do well you know what? i'm gonna tell you something i had to adjust it in my own head too it's like i was there was a time when i had that kind of honesty where where like it worked as game because real game is no game and so i was just honest and because i was a, and then i learned to kind of lie and not be honest and then i had to go back to what really worked one. right I yeah mean, I think yeah i mean it was, it's all about confidence honestly and i think sure, I, sure. I, I gained confidence from comedy being on stage mm -hmm. you know talking in front of people you guys you guys get it and uh so that really changed the game for me because before then i didn't know how to talk to people or talk to women in general and i was a relationship guy i was always in relationship i was never mm -hmm. like out here like you know, one you, you, it was because of what you wanted to do, but because it was safe. It was safe. It was safe. Yeah. I was like, all right, I'm gonna be with this girl for two years. I'm gonna be with this girl for three years. I'm gonna be with this girl for a year and a half. I'm gonna be. So I was always in like every. I was in a relationship, and then I was out for like three months, and I was back in a long relationship. In and out of jail. Out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like that one hood dude just can't get out of. Think he's he out of trouble. Damn. Out. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Neil, any other Neil world, is man. walking out with Neil's walking out with his duffel bag, and somebody screams, "You'll be back!" Yeah. <laughs> Straight, up. Straight up. Neil can't stay off the streets, son. Straight up. So how Dante? Like, how do people get out of that? I mean, we talk about laying the five. Y'all acting like stuff. it's a bad thing that I was committed. No, it's no, not a uh, bad thing. You but said it was it a is. bad thing. Sure it is. Sure it's a bad thing. And you were like, man, I was in relationships all the time. I, I was, can't I get was, no... Uh, I was playing it safe because I was like, all right, one person wants to fuck me. That's enough. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, yeah, I right, got it. But, that, but the, 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 the thought of that... See, if you, were, if you were in relationships because it was your... If, like, if you were... You met the right you were person. In relationship and you, and because you, you had no options. Yeah. So, like, right. people are... You, it, it's interesting how what guys will do or you when they, you had no when no they have... Yeah, I thought I had no feel options. Like, well, yeah. Well, I mean, if you think you don't have options, you don't. You know, I mean, that, right. that yeah. just goes without saying. So, so if you're... If you're if you're monogamous or you're in relationships and, and this is genuinely what you like, but how do you know what you don't like if you haven't, if right. you kind of haven't exercised your, you know, the whole social dynamics, you get better at it and it gets, it, it, it helps you more because when you swing back into a relationship, the social dynamics of single and knowing different types of women and being in different scenarios make you a better relationship person. Right. You know? Yeah. For so sure. it's, yeah, I think no, well, I broke out of it when I started comedy. When I, once I started comedy, I was like, I was more confident. I realized I had more options, and I, I you know, I, I played the field a little more. But when I was in relationship, there were definitely relationships that I enjoyed being in and wanted to be in. But at the same time, I stayed in a lot of them too long because I was like, mm -hmm. but if I leave, no one's gonna fuck me. You know, so or like no yeah. one's gonna love me ever again. So what am I? I gotta stay here for four years or like fuck. Or you I'm know? never going to yeah. find. I found this one. Uh, I don't know if I'll be lucky enough to find another one. Right. And then you find another one and then you go, I don't know if I'll be good enough to find another. This is yeah. I've been fucking around. I mean, Harry and I have been talking about this. I, me and Andre talked about this on on his podcast. Slouch oh. theory. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> they um, we were we were talking about the, you know, like how the. What I mean, I hate this. This is sounds so secret, Oprah secret, but like the fact that once you've achieved a certain level of proficiency, you make a decision whether or not, um, whether so for like I use the analogy like when you, you know, when the comedy shut down and we couldn't, you know, you get rusty and then you get on stage and you think, well, um, 
you you you're nervous because you you don't think you're going to be as funny as you were right. right so you go oh you know i got to get back and knock the rust off i'll do a bunch of sets to knock the rust off but the reality is if unless you're a beginner who's still learning the craft like how long how long have you been doing comedy now 11 years so you're at a yeah. place where you know neil nanda comedy like right. you are a mass you're a master at that comedy and so not to say that you won't innovate but the basic you have mastered the basics of whatever your style of comedy is right um when you get laid off when you have a layoff where you don't do comedy what you do is you start saying i don't know if i'm still as funny as i was yes so you have to do these sets to say what you, in your mind is to 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 knock the rust off but what you're really doing is you're just proving yourself to be who you think you are yeah like and Not and wrong. so and then once you believe that you're as funny as you were by how many other sets in your mind, the magic number that gets you there, then because you're not afraid, your, your, your brain, it's like your brain opens up and then you have access to all the technique and all the knowledge that you've had, that you had even before the pandemic, because right. you were so frequent. So it's the fear which is something that I say all the time that you you never can let emotion give emotion a, a seat at the dinner table because it's it's never good. Yeah. Um, you don't fight better. You don't do comedy better. You don't whatever. And I'm not saying to express emotion. I'm saying when you have fear, real fear, it blocks off your ability to access all the knowledge is in your head. And so you do these sets, and then when you don't, you've done enough. It's almost like you go, okay. Now I believe I'm funny enough. Right. And it's just the moment that you say, I believe it. So my thought is, why can't you just say, I'm going to believe, I, 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 why can't you just believe what you know to be true in the first place instead of just having the sets to knock off the rust? Well, I mean, going back to relationships, I mean, first of all, I agree with you because, I mean, during the pandemic, I did take like months off and then I was nervous mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, what's going to happen? But at minute three on stage, I was back. You know, yeah, it's it's right. like riding a bike. You were back in the mud. Right, 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 right. You're like, oh, right, I am funny. This does work. These, and it was right, like, right. But you believe it. Right. It's the moment that you believe it. You know. Yes. Yeah. Like it was like two minutes on stage, and I was like, oh, right, I belong here. This is not an accident. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but going back to relationships, I didn't believe it. I didn't have that confidence. I didn't have any attention from women. So uh, you know, I was just like a loser kid, play guitar. I was in a band and stuff, and I got some attention from girls from the band, but generally, like throughout through school and and things, I didn't get that attention. When I started doing comedy, I got a lot more attention, and that's when I started believing it and going, "Oh, I can be funny and have a good conversation and talk to girls and flirt and not be right. autistic." So it right. was, <laughs> it definitely, it, I had to know, I had to believe it at a certain point. It took me a long time, but a long time isn't really that long. I started doing comedy when I was nineteen. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I've probably figured it out when I was like in my early 20s, 2021 20, is when I started building that confidence. So it wasn't right. very it wasn't like I, it's not like I learned it late in life or anything, mm -hmm. but I was in relationships up until then all throughout like high school and through even throughout college. I was in a four year relationship. My whole college, wow. I was in a four year right. relationship. You know, wow. Wasted. What a waste of college. I know. What a waste <laughs> of college. I will say she was she was banging. Bad. She was, yeah, she was, she was a ten, way out of my league. So there was that. At least it was that. You know. Yeah. I guess I don't know. She cheated on me, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she got she got some well, other day. I, I mean, but know. she she cheated on you because you you just said what you said, which she's way out of my league. Yep. And yeah. and, and and what when your whatever your truth is, whatever your honest truth is, when it comes to that, is is how it kind of manifests itself. You know. Yeah. It's I agree. literally like it manifests itself into, oh, she, she ends up cheating on you. Right, because I believe she was out of my league. If I didn't, yeah, it wouldn't have happened. No, you know? you're right, and and you don't realize that that whatever that it's 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 weird because you lie to yourself, you lie to yourself about this and that and the other, but at on a on a real truthful level, what you think permeates everything that you do, what you say, what you do, how you walk, how you dress. Every aspect of it it, 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 it comes through your pores. That insecurity comes through your pores yeah, but and I, people I, read I was, that. 
I was 22. I was fucking stupid. Everybody's stupid. Yeah, yeah. I'm 22. You know, I, yeah, I, at 22. Sure, yeah, sure, sure. Idiot. Um, but uh, yeah, it definitely manifested itself, and uh, I definitely learned that confidence through comedy. I wouldn't have had it prior. And what you're saying about being nervous before going on stage, I, I still get nervous even if I'm mm. not rusty. And I and I like right. being nervous. I enjoy being nervous because if that means I yeah. care, and that means that you know, because right, comedy is right. not an exact science. I used to try to yeah, make yeah. it an exact. I used to be like, all right, well, if my laughter is this decibel level, I used to oh, like. Shit. I was real Indian about that shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I was taking data and shit, but then I realized like it's out. There's too many variables. It's, it's out of my control. Yeah. You're trying to moneyball yeah. the pussy. I was trying to moneyball <laughs> the pussy, straight up. So money you know, with, with with comedy, I d- I realize everything's out of my control. That's why I still get some nerves because anything can happen. But if yeah. I'm not nervous, if I'm too confident, I usually bomb because they, yeah. they the crowd will see that they're like, this guy doesn't even want to mm. be here. Why is he doing this? You know, if you're too confident. So I, I enjoy. I, I like when I get the nerves. I remind myself, this is a good thing. I go, okay, good, good, good. I'm glad I got some nerves. If I didn't have nerves right now, I go out there and bomb. Let me ask you this. Uh, you said that the audience, because I'm like cocky, confident. On, like, I don't give a fuck about them. Right. But to be honest, my thought is I want to engage in an honest way between this audience. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not. I'm not afraid, but I do want to, there is a, a, there is a need that like, I understand that the, 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 the goal or the diamond or the pearl of this whole thing is the engagement between the audience. You, that moment where you connect and you're laughing. So even though I'm cocky about my ability to do it, I still want to like, I'm a, I'm a, like, I'm a heroin addict. Like I just, I like the feeling of the connection. Mm-hmm. Whether or not I can do it or not do it doesn't move me either way. It doesn't make me go, oh, I got to try harder or whatever. I know I'm confident in that I'm I'm capable, but I do like the the engagement. I like the what it what it what the result is, what whatever so whatever seeds you sow, I like the fruit of it. Um yeah. so even though I'm not afraid and I'm cocky, I don't think it comes off as I don't give a fuck because I do give a fuck. Just you're, you're not just comfortable. You're not cocky. Yeah, yeah. I, I no, nah, I'm cocky. You're, you're, I'm you're, com- <laughs> you're cocky, confident. Yeah. Confident. I would I'm, say confident, cocky. not cocky. Well, you might be cocky. Mm. I, I yeah, subscribe. Cocky. I really, you know, I don't. I respect that school of thought of like, I just want it to be an experience. I want to connect with the audience. I agree. Yeah. I think that connection is so important. But I don't subscribe to that school of thought of I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it for my personal connection. I'm doing it to entertain. I, I, I'm I'm the opposite of a lot of comedians because they're like, oh, I don't do it for the audience. I do it for myself. I do it to speak the truth. I don't do any of that shit. I wrote jokes mm-hmm. to make you laugh. I'm an entertainer. I'm a fucking clown. I'm going up there. I'm going to be a clown. I'm going to be funny. We're going to have a good time. Yeah. And that's it. I'm, I'm there to do my job. You know, my job is to yeah. entertain. I'm not there right. to spark a fucking uh, philosophical philosophical debate yeah but I, children you but know here's, but let me, I, but here's the thing even that is is honest like do you know what i'm saying like i um i just watched uh did you see the brian regan special that I just came on yeah 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 i started i fell asleep but it was good i started it now here's the thing i thought it was his best one you know why why i i i felt he was i felt like he was a human being yeah. Instead of a like Instead a goofy a dude, and talk yeah, about more personal right. shit like having OCD, which yeah, is and it was it was like the, never it was the that. sweet spot. It was the it was the sweet spot. Like, look, he's still goofy, but I'm right. saying he, it wasn't like I'm trying to sell you that I'm goofy. Right. It, it was it came it was from honest. like a real it was a real honest place, hmm. goofy but honest. And so even in in entertainment. It's it's goofy. You know what? Let's shut this down. Let's we're gonna go uh, do if you can hang out so we could do the Patreon. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Please, Join us over at the, Patreon. Plug, plug uh, the social media and all that real quick. Absolutely, man. Yeah, follow me uh, on Instagram, Twitter, uh, everything. I'm even on TikTok now. I don't nice. know why, but I'm on there. <laughs> uh, everything is at Neil Nanda, N E L N A N D A. Uh, I have two and a half hours of material on my YouTube, and I am back on tour in April. So check out my tour dates, neilnanda.com, and I will be uploading a new clip every week after my tour. So check it out. Nice. Nice. 
Um, Harry, talk to uh, Go everything I have is at Harry Terjanian. Follow me on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, the whole thing. Uh, also, subscribe to the Man School 202 YouTube page if you haven't already. Uh, check out the Man School TikTok, Man School 202. And then most importantly, join us over at Patreon. We're going to go over there right now and answer a little bit of listener mail uh, directly from the patrons. So, Dre, talk to me. Yo, Andre D. Thompson, AndreDThompson.com, Slouch Theory Podcast, and uh, have a good one, guys. Yeah, y'all know how to get me. Everything Dante Nero. Google me. Um, a one-on-one consultation, DanteNero.com. Click on consult, and you can book time with me. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all, man. We are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.